My name is David Vose, and I'm the Vice President of Risk Management at Archer. You can see that it's fairly stable in most of the uh, world. In Africa, in very, very particular, it's dropped from nearly seven children per woman down to somewhere around about four and a half, which again is a great um, testament to the distribution of healthcare across the world. The life expectancy of people has been increasing. So pigs would sit under these shelters and have their babies, their piglets. And pig farms now look like this. And egg producing farms look like that. And they now look like this. And there's a lot associated with that. There's a lot of disease, there's a lot of uh, very concentrated pollutions, etc. I mention all of these things because it brings some context to where I come from and, and where the world is ending up heading. Human effects on the planet are very complex. Um, and I just want to give you one kind of simple example of this. And essentially, the best that we can do is to set targets on various things we can measure, which we know or expect are the drivers behind all of these changes to our planet. But a newer way of looking at it is to provide prosperity to current and future society. Um, this is um, an article in Reuters that um, was produced this week. This is a, the, a new Bitcoin being generated is the benefit that the mining Bitcoin mining companies get um, by processing the transaction. So the more valuable the Bitcoin, the more people want to get in and do these, um, these transaction calculations. That's the power consumption of Poland. Or you can say that 54% of the power consumption of Italy just to generate these calculations. The electronic waste is 24 kilotons. Let's look at an individual transaction. An individual transaction carbon footprint is equivalent to 1.9 million visa traction transactions. And this is really just a speculative investment. The first thing is that you can think of risk management about helping to ensure the achievement of the strategic goals of a business. ESG, environmental and social government risks. This is how I, um, I think that we need to set up analysis for in risk management in order to try and, and uh, address all of these risk management issues or ESG, environment, social government issues. And it's not very different from what we're all already should be doing. Now, if you have a corporate structure, your risk tolerance can be at the, ent at the corporate entity owning um, level. You should be putting in your tolerance for what you consider to be and acceptable. So you set up a corporate level, the individual statements about what would be an acceptable versus unacceptable versus catastrophic. So a risk-based approach to thinking about impacts. And you do the same thing at the financial level. Well, these are mitigations. These are airbags and seatbelts. So passengers might be injured when the car crashes on an icy road. Where it becomes interesting with bow ties is to look at multiple different reasons that you might have that risk event and multiple different consequences that can occur. So on the left hand side, we have icy roads going too fast, heavy rain and distracted by the phone. So we can now, if we have a, qualitative, a quantitative system and, and a bow tie kind of analysis, we can also look at how a risk is a driver for another risk. But now because of the sequence of different effects that um, this control is protecting against, we can see that the value of this control is much larger. And that enables us to think about how, which, we, which control that is, or the tactic that's going to fail. We're not, it's unlikely or there's some significant chance we won't get into the European, Middle East and Africa market. So apologies for the snuffling. So, um, we also have uh, ability now to compare across different entities. So if you've added on that sort of uh, scoring system that I already explained to you with the appetites, we can look at where our risks are really concentrated. You know, so here we see only half of our, con our controls by value are working effectively, meaning not just the number of controls that are working or not working, 
It's the ones that we really like, re relying on. And I've already mentioned to you how we can achieve that scale. While we're setting up our limits, what would be considered to be, for example, an aggregate or individual low impact, a high, medium, et cetera, very high catastrophic. But you'll notice it doesn't go from zero to one, it extends beyond that. Because there are some things that can occur multiple times. Um, sorry, the, both the likelihood being reduced and the magnitude of the consequence being reduced. Now, it's the length of this tadpole, if you like, where it comes from, that tells us the difference between uh, some people call it inherent or you call it unmanaged risk and residual unmanaged risk. It's the length of these lines that will help you know, us in the future in auditing risks and how we're controlling them. So we know that we need to focus on those ones where the tadpole line starts somewhere in the more uh, dangerous regions and ends up in the less dangerous region because with, unless these controls and mitigations are really in place, our actual risk is somewhere in the higher region, um, not where we're hoping it to be. And you can see what, I've, what we're able to do. So if we are able to look at the total losses distribution we have from all of our risks, so for example, here Belgium's 5% of our market, 40% of our CO2 emission, maybe it's time to stop doing business in Belgium. So um, a little plug for Archer. Here is my email address, david.vos at archerirm.com. You're very welcome to contact me if you wish and have a discussion with our products. So you might like to consider looking at the archerirm.com website from time to time because um, you'll see some very interesting things coming.